Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com Okay, starting tomato number 11. The flow is generic now. We need to think about the score. Right. How can we tell if an answer is correct or not? So we can get the score based on the dictionary result. Yeah. So we have a bunch of options here. So we can have simple data structures like dictionaries as one option. Mm -hmm. So we would look something like score for a dictionary of question and answer. And that's the result. Right. So we need to score the results. And we pass the correct answers. That is also mm. question and answer. Interesting. Could be probably a map. Yeah. We go from question to question and we compare. We figure out the right answer or not. If okay. we decide to go with simple data structures, otherwise we can create our own data structures, our own strings mm. that represent results, that represent correctness, that represent incorrectness. And then we got to complicate a little bit because now we have to maintain those structs. Although they have more meaning in the type system, so we need to make a trade-off here. Are we going with types and have a more rigid design? Or can we go with data structures and have a more flexible, dynamic design? Again, they are both valid options. I tend to go with the simplest solution. And yeah. for me, the simplest is the, the dictionary, dictionary is, one. Yeah. Because I don't need to create any struct, any class. And I have tests covering the correctness of the code. Yeah, let's, let's go with a uh, simple data structures for now. So we can have a score for a result and we pass the correct answers. And we need to create the correct answers beforehand. Yes. Because if you think about it, everything here is still internal. There's no public interface to this module. There's nothing yet that we can use to play this game. We could potentially have a start function, like start game, and we give questions. Okay. Ordered, I guess. Yes. We're going to start the flow with the correct order, mm -hmm. just like we have here. Yes. Okay. We need to give it questions, we need to give it a router, and we need to give it correct answers. A dictionary from question yeah. to answer. And that would be our public interface. And that's how we start a game from outside this module. And we could even start testing from there. Okay. So I imagine a function like that. Yeah, and the answer. Yeah. Or needs to be hashable also. It's a trade-off, right? And the answer probably needs to be equatable so we can score. And the trade-off for simplicity is not to have your own structs and just use lists and dictionaries. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah, me too. So as I said, we have many options here. This is one option. And as I see, it's the simplest. And I really like it. There's some kind of... Surety. It's quite elegant. It is, yeah. Probably how we would solve problems in closure or Lisp. Right. <laughs> just using simple data structures that everybody understands. If we start creating our own structs and people look at it, then they need to understand how they work. And everybody knows how a dictionary works. Yeah. Everybody knows how a set or a, an array or a list works. I really like what you said before about maintaining. And I think from what I've seen, not so many people understand. But yes, if you create your new type there, you actually need to maintain it throughout the life cycle. And that means tests also. And that means uh, passing it from layer to layer. You know, it's it can be complex. Yeah. And then when we have a service and you want to sync it or save it to a database or send it via the cloud, what happens is that you need to have mapping layers to serialize, deserialize. And dictionaries and lists, they are already deserializable. Mm -hmm. We might have some more complex structs that lives inside those dictionaries. So why complicate it? Exactly. But again, it's an option. So let's think about other options. So let's imagine we can have an enum answer, and then we can have case correct, and it holds the type, and the case incorrect, and also holds the type. So now we can represent if they're correct or not by wrapping them on these enums. Mm -hmm. We could also have a struct type answer that has the, the answer string or answer type, and it's going to have a, a boolean like is correct. Hmm. Yeah, that would work as well. Or we can even say, well, it holds a string. Mm -hmm. So this could be a string answer. Then we can have many types. Or we can have a protocol answer that someone needs to implement. Right. Like a protocol answer that forces you to have uh, is correct. 
So then you can have an image answer and then you can have audio a string answer, answer audio answer. Yep. So many options we can have here. And then we will have also a type for a question. So the same thing, struct question. And this question can be is multiple answer. And mm -hmm. you can kind of have this same structure. Well, we see where this is going. Yep. So we could go on and spike more or even create real data structures. I'm not against having those types. I just like simplicity. And for me, the simplest thing is to use things that already exist mm -hmm. and that everybody understands. So playing lists and dictionaries again. You don't have to like it. You don't have to do it this way. And we accept there are other solutions. Yeah, so absolutely. If you open your mind a little bit, you might, might see some beauty in this. <laughs> or not. It that might backfire in the future. So if it happens, what do we do? We refactor. Yeah. So I think we can start writing our solution. Okay. So we don't need models right now if we have some kind of interface like this. Mm -hmm. Do you want to start with a start game or the scoring? We could try to do both at the same time. If we test through the public interface, maybe mm, we're going to create a okay. solution that will be open for changes in the future. Okay. Okay, I resetted everything we did with the spike, and I think I'm happy to go with the simple solution with dictionaries and arrays. What do you think? Yeah, we can see where it goes. Yeah, we can start with the score. Right now, the result is just a dictionary. We're not passing a score. Right. And we need to fix that. So let me have a look at the tests we have so far. And what do we have here? We have all the tests for the flow, but now instead of giving back a dictionary as the result, we need a struct that holds the dictionary plus the score. Or we could also just plus the score here yeah. as an integer. The problem is that every time we need to add more stuff to the score, we're going to break this interface and break everything. So maybe we should just have a data structure. Yeah, okay. So if we have a struct result, mm -hmm. that's the game result, we still need the answers. That is just the dictionary of question and answer, key value. And of course, we need to give this a type, question, hashable, and answer, generic types. Just to be clear, are you suggesting putting the score in the result also? Yes. Okay. Something like that. What do you think? So someone else is going to score and create the result and then pass it to the router? Yes. Okay. And that should be private. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't want this yet. I just want to make my test pass again. If we change this here, so it's a result of question answer, and we are breaking everything. So we need to pass a result with answers, and the same here. That's it. And in our tests, the type here as well it needs to be result string string, and the same here result string string. Can just build. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now it should be results dot answers, and here should be result dot answers as well. And hopefully that will build. Yes. We're passing. We're passing. And we have some duplicated code here, so we can have a private result function that returns the result question answer. And here we can return. Oh, it's private func. Private func result. And now we can. Let's go result here. So now we have one point for creating the result. Oh, the problem is that they have the same name. So let's name these two answers. Okay. And we're probably going to break some code in here. And it's nice. It's private. We only break the internal code. So we are good. And it passes. Okay. I'm happy with this. I don't think we need any refactoring here. Okay. So the flow somehow needs to give a score. Yeah, we need the score there. Something like this. But the result is created in the flow, so the flow should provide the score somehow. Yes. I don't want the flow calculating the score. Yeah, I agree. And we should pass a dependency that does it for us, so we can have different way of scoring. Should we have a protocol score or...? A simple function will do it for now. Yeah, okay. So something like scoring or scoring yeah. function, right? That gets the dictionary and returns an integer. That's it. Okay. As you said, it's a separate responsibility, scoring, right? 
and the way we're gonna score it doesn't depend on this module right now and and you need to specify escaping yes cool okay so now just to make my test pass i'm going to return zero okay so we start our flow with questions and we need to give it also closure so let's do that let's get this type and let's say scoring and it has a default value that is this one and we pass it here yep and let's break this uh, does it work oh uh -huh. it doesn't know about the query it's a string yeah, it's string string okay it needs to be escaping i think i can get rid of the return here okay let's add a test now rows to result let's say scores so if we give here scoring function i want to test that we are getting the right value so if i just, just return. return 10 doesn't matter the value no exactly i want to make sure that the Reset. score is 10. yep that's it but we don't have a score yet so let's do this let's add the score to our result type and we're gonna break here so for now let's say score zero and i want to see a failing test that's it so right now we can just return 10 in here default tdd let's do the same here and let's put it 20 and it's fail so let's use the scoring function and here we can pass anything because we're not testing this yet and i think it's quite silly to have these two tests because we don't want this hard coded here so i think we're fine to have just one yeah i want to transform this test in something else so with two questions scores the right answer with right answers so now i can capture received answers and uh, it's going to be an empty dictionary and i want to make sure that i get the answers answers in return 20 but i want to capture received answers equal answers i need to give it a type and it's string string and i want to make sure that my received answers is correct mm -hmm. so we are passing the right yep. value there and let's build this and it fails so now we can pass scoring answers that's it okay okay i'm happy now i think we are done with this that's it we now have a way of scoring but we don't have a score function yet yeah let's move this drug to its own file maybe even the router i know we're using it there but it could be in its own file let's move the struct here and should we have the same for the router yeah and it's just a protocol right i think our flow now looks lighter let's run this and see what happens oh good let's commit let's commit okay we're done with this but if we want to use this module we need to start thinking about access control and we still don't have the scoring function if you remember in our spike we had the start game public function that would start everything for us yeah we just give it a router and we hide all this complexity from our clients yeah i think we should start there so i think it should live in a game yeah. file so okay. we can start with a game test a sort of integration test right getting everything together yes so we can have our game test class there is a test case and we can start with a simple test test start game so we can probably test that we are scoring correctly and let's say we answer one out of yes. two correct okay. scores one okay okay so we can start a game let's start game with an array of questions so in this case it's going to be q1 q2 and we need to give it the router and the correct answers and this is going to be q1 answer is a1 and q2 answer is a2 okay and now we can give the assertion that okay echo router dot routed result dot score equals one 
So we start the game. We're gonna route just like we do here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Tomato is done. So we can use the same router spy we have. We can expose it, and then we can just answer a one and wrong. Make sure that we score one. Okay. Well, it doesn't we... even compile. We can make it compile before we stop this tomato. Okay. Quickly. Can create a game file here, and we can have just a public function start game. Let's set our tests here. And the game starts with questions. That's an array of question. It could be any type. And you need the router and correct answers. That is a dictionary of question answer. Where the router types match the question. The question and answer. Yeah. So well, let's give it some generic types here. So question, hashable, answer and the router, so where the router question matches the question type and the router answer also matches the answer type. It's quite verbose. <laughs> huh, but router is internal. But it needs to be public because it needs yeah. to be implemented, implemented outside. So let's make the router public. That's it. And in our flow test, we can expose this router now so it can be used. Yep. in the game test. So let's move it to its own file. Let's have our router spy. Cool. I think we have an extra bracket here. No, the array is not closed after 2.2. Two. Okay, we're getting there. So we have our router, we have our correct answers. And the question's parameter name is mandatory. Yes. Almost there. Oh, yeah. Oh, the result type also needs to be public, and that makes sense. Now we should build. Import quiz engine. Okay, almost there. And I need to import quiz engine. And we don't need to make it testable. Oh, you need to make public the properties also. Yes. Public and... Public. What else? It builds. Okay. We can stop here. Long tomato. <laughs> I quite like that we don't need to make this testable. It means we are testing the public interface. And as an integration test, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. So, so far it's good. Yeah. It was uh, a rocky tomato. <laughs> yes. But trust the process. <laughs> okay. I need a break. Me too. Mm -hmm.